everyone, welcome back to Creative Life. Um, we are here with Lydia Lukianova. I'm Ren. Um, so welcome back to the third and final day of Illustration Week. We are the second to last show for the day, for the week. Um, where are you guys turning, tuning in from? Uh, it's really wet and soggy here in San Francisco. Well, the sun's finally coming out, but it's been pretty rainy today. Um, so today, we are going to be finishing up, if you've been tuning in for the past two days. Um, Lydia's been working on a really great postcard that today we are going to turn into an augmented reality experience. Um, so Lydia, do you wanna show off the postcard in action? You guys get to actually see it today. So this is our uh, final finished project. Um, and I'm going to show the final steps today. So I'm using HP Reveal app. Yeah. Here, let me get the poster out of the way. <laughs> Gotta do some finagling here, guys. Here, hold, hold it right here, and I'm gonna. All right. So can you guys see the the bird in action? Lydia, your hands are good. <laughs> it's really tricky to figure out that yeah. GoPro camera. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> so we are using the HP Reveal app for those that missed it. Um, Lydia is doing a lot of the animation, all of it, in uh, Photoshop, and then using this app to create that augmented reality experience. Yeah. There you go. See that. So I'm going uh, to show a little overview of all the tools and uh, steps we uh, need to create yeah. something like this. And um, do you want to show your? Uh, Lydia created a presentation for you guys. So <laughs> yes, a little show deck. Off a little step by step. <laughs> it's going to be a little boring, but uh, <laughs> no, it's awesome. It, this will show you guys uh, how that start to finish process works, what we worked on over the past few days, and what we're going to be doing today. Um, so you can switch over to Lydia's computer. So day one, we were in Photoshop yes. Sketch. So we started, so this is one of the ways of creating augmented reality. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you have to do or is typical. I'm just describing my process and um, the first the, um, my first experience with creating augmented reality and that's how I figured it out for myself because uh, I use mostly uh, iPad and uh, drawing mobile apps on an iPad to create illustrations and uh, I, I would say I have a, a drawing background so I'm not an animator and that's why I chose also um, Photoshop to create frame animations and not like After Effects and uh, other more like, robust um, uh, tools for creating uh, motion graphics. Yeah. So uh, I started on day one uh, with uh, drawing my uh, uh, birds uh, in sequence and I also used Adobe uh, Stock uh, to find the right um, series of images for that. And, um, the next step was to uh, actually vectorize my, ske my sketches and um, I did it again on an iPad using Illustrator Draw. And uh, so I created outlines and added, added some um, underlying color. And then what I did next, I just sent that draw file to Illustrator, which comes with all the layers that I created on an iPad and it's and really you can, easy. You can send the file right from the iPad directly yes. into the app, right? Yeah, just Using one that tap. Creative Cloud Magic. Yeah. <laughs> it's really convenient. Yes, and then in Illustrator, I set up my document, uh, the size of the postcard, and that is, we used five inches by seven. And uh, I also uh, added a, uh, the background using the polar grid tool in the Illustrator. It makes it very easy to draw concentric uh, circles. Um, 
Also today, I'm going to create in Illustrator um, separate artboards, which I will then uh, export as PNG files. Those will and be your keyframes. That's going to be my layers in Photoshop, and uh, I will use this to create a frame il uh, animation. Mm -hmm. So in Photoshop, we're going to have a, yeah, we're going to make every bring everything together and uh, animate uh, things frame by frame. We're going to have like uh, 15 layers and 20 frames for our final animation. And the last step, which makes everything happen, that is the uh, um, yeah, design tools online that we can use, and it's Orasma Studio, and also a, uh, an app that comes with it, and it's, it has a different name now, HP Reveal, and it's a free app that you can download for your iPhone or your Android device. And Mary which, asks, how is this not popular yet? Well, I think that's the beginning. We're making it popular. I mean, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Because it's such a great way to um, add a little bit of interactivity to you. We're not making anything crazy here. We're just showing something that I think everybody can achieve with the tools that are available for you. And, yeah, and for they're those, free, yeah. too. So, well, Definitely. three of them. Yeah. For those of you that are freelancers, especially I think a, a postcard is one of the, the easiest and best ways to promote your work, send it out to art directors, and using something like an AR a little feature like, like that, that really makes you stand out. Um, yeah. So it's a great promotional tool. And if you're a student and you want to impress your instructor, oh, yeah. work with, <laughs> like make your thesis. Get an A yeah. on your next project. About AR, um, yeah. that's uh, one of the uh, workflows you can use. Mm -hmm. And if you want to incorporate iPad into that your workflow, so yeah. you can use uh, Adobe Mobile Apps yeah. for that. And I, I think we have a uh, contest, a challenge going on today. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, we have a limited palette challenge today. Um, what is that? So uh, if you guys go to the challenge tab under, uh, you're going to be e.net slash live and check out that challenge tab. Um, the There are three uh, colors to use in your limited palette. Um, the theme is movement. You guys can create an illustration with those limited colors and uh, work in Illustrator or Photoshop. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Just work around that theme, be inspired. Um, Lydia, you've got this moving bird, so it's a, it's a great um, great project to be inspired from. Maybe you guys can draw some birds for us. Um, what, what is this bird's name? Didn't we decide on a name yesterday? Well, I think uh, we had a lot of interesting and very nice uh, <laughs> names Submission. yesterday. And I, I wish I kept track of them, but yeah. I remember there was one Valentine or Valentine. Valentine. And I think we uh, added sweet to it, sweet so it's like Valentine. sweet valen Valentine. Yeah, um, I like that. I mean, it's, it's March 1st today, but I, that was definitely appropriate. We were in February. Yeah. Now it's spring. Birds are out. St. Valentine's trying to find it a honey. It's going to send this <laughs> promo material out to all the ladies. Um, so okay. we've uh, moved from uh, the iPad into Illustrator. Yes. We've got our working on our keyframes now. Yes. So I'm in Illustrator. And uh, so this is my trigger image. Uh, this is my the postcard image. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add ex additional artboards. And I'm going to separate uh, my illustration into pieces to mm -hmm. make it easier to animate uh, later in Photoshop. So I'll place the birds on each individual layer, uh, artboard, sorry. And now I'm going to decompose my background. So how many frames are we needing for uh, the Yeah, the so today? like tw 20 frames, 20. something like that. Okay. Um, So do you guys think you're going to use um, this technique to make your own work? Um, it would be great to 
It's great to see if you guys start experimenting with it today. Please. Or if somebody, yeah, if somebody used um, another AR. Yeah, please share tool. in the yeah. chat. We'd, we'd love to see it. Okay, so I'm creating separate artboards and mm. then just removing um, individual circles to create this kind of a pulsating movement. Mm -hmm. And to do that, you're just hiding Oops. one Should of those I circles. That. Um, to create a well, frame, I'm right? just deleting them. Deleting them. Didn't do that one right. So you guys like the name Sweet Valentine? Is that right for this bird? Dolly asks, what tool did you use to make the concentric circles again? It's called a polar grid tool and you can find it under line segment tool. So it's a pol yeah, last polar, choice, polar, polar grid, grid tool. tool. And uh, if you select it and uh, double click it, you, you get this uh, options dialog and you can set the number of your circles under concentric dividers and I think I had eight and oh, then yeah. I set my radial dividers to zero because I don't want, um, well I'll show what it means when you have your radial uh, dividers so you have this uh, uh, lines that come from the center out. And that looks like one of those radar maps you'd see yeah. in a submarine. So I, I set it to zero just to have the concentric circles and that's what I had and then I selected the inner one, uh, this, the uh, innermost one and then filled it with color. And that's all I it did. Makes it really easy. That's I great. know, and I didn't know about this tool up until two days ago. Oh, wow. There's so many <laughs> hidden features with Be an Illustrator. Yeah, usually I use the blend tool to mm -hmm. uh, create, um, to blend shapes. Repeating lines, lines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll go back to my circles here. Jim says he's doing a t-shirt design for a client, and he can't wait to see how this uh, augmented reality works in that context. Would love to see that on a t-shirt. That seems like a really great way to um, get somebody to start using the app and look at your design in a different way. Yeah, you can use it with anything. Mm -hmm. Flyers, you can design, if you're designing a magazine cover or a book cover, oh, wow, that would be or cool. a, an illustration inside the, the book mm -hmm. or a magazine. And the fact that we're already just tuned into our phones 24 seven yeah. um, creates a, a great experience. What I find an interesting could be an interesting project for me personally is to um, animate um, a mural, like um, wow, to paint yeah. to paint a mural, and then also add an AR. Uh, Definitely, and element to folks could go up to just tiny sections and get really intimate with the mural. Yeah, and, uh, have a new experience. Could be really like complex, detailed yeah. illustration of some sort with a lot of things happening in mm -hmm. it. That's a great idea. Um, let's see. Daniel asks, does it have to be flat to work? Does the image have to be flat um, to animate? What do you mean by, does it have to be flat? You mean Like the, the actual illustration, yeah. Does it need to be on a, a flat surface for um, the phone to be able to track? The image. Have you tried it with a more three-dimensional? Like m maybe if the illustration was wrapped around a surface, like a, a cylinder, would it would it still work the right way? Do you think? Um, if you don't know, that's. I don't. That's they, well, I I, um, I don't think I can answer that question, but mm -hmm. I would say probably no. Um, yeah. Daniel says that would, for example, fabric would fabric wrinkles damage the effect. Well, that's, I think I, I should run an ex, a, a that's test. A great question. Actually, yeah, it's a very, I never thought of something like that. Be interesting. Um, I love making uh, surface designs and textiles. Mm -hmm. It would be great to try animating something on a textile, print it out uh, with a surface like Spoonflower, and, and see if you made a piece of clothing or maybe a curtain or something, and see if the, the app will still track that image and make it animate. 
Um, that'd be a great experiment. Yeah, and it could be so cool. Mm -hmm. um, fashion shows. Yeah, too. very fashionable. I, maybe maybe you'll see Gucci or Prada um, start showing that on the runway. That's a great idea. Animated yeah. wallpaper, Daniel says. Jim says he's freaking out uh, about the possibilities, billboards, bus wraps, packaging. This is the future, definitely. Advertising, I think, would just blow up with this kind of technology. It gets you, folks to interact um, with something. I, Especially in this day and age, I, I feel like um, people are ignoring advertising more because it gets really annoying, but this is definitely an in innovative way to work with your customers. Miriam says that the AR thing is really growing on her. It's good to hear. Um, I think once you see it in action, it's it's really inspiring. Um, and Lydia and I were discussing this earlier. Um, for those, those of you who are a little bit confused by uh, VR versus AR, uh, what are what are the differences? Um, augmented reality um, is you're still in the environment and um, looking through your phone. Uh, it's, I forget who brought it up, but um, somebody mentioned Pokemon Go. That's augmented reality. You're looking through your device and seeing the world around you and uh, the Pokemon are appearing in that environment. So you're altering the reality around you where um, VR is you're in a virtual reality. You're, uh, you're seeing a lot of the start uh, popping up in video games, it's a completely virtual experience. There is mm -hmm. no um, appearance of the reality around yes. you. Yes. So the uh, uh, augmented reality is uh, a, a combination of the physical world, and then there is this additional in, uh, digital information mm -hmm. that gets overlaid over that. So you yeah. always have to have a physical trigger of some sort. So it mm -hmm. can be a postcard, a, a flyer, a po uh, poster, and the digital information, additional digital information that enhances it. It's uh, animation, video, uh, like a photo, slideshow, mm -hmm. some uh, links that uh, takes you to the websites yeah. uh, to read, to find out more yeah. about whatever is uh, illustrated. Mm -hmm. So you guys might be hearing um, about uh, AR and VR, VR interchangeably, but they're, they're very different experiences. Yeah. VR, so. virtual, virtual reality, reality is a completely Virtual yes, so reality. You gotta keep them separate. And to experience it, you need to, uh, at least right now, to have a Hamlet or Google's. Mm -hmm. And with uh, augmented reality AR, you need to have an app yes. that you use with your mobile device, mm -hmm. because that's what uh, uh, translates your static image into a moving image mm -hmm. experience, something like that. Yeah. Hi, Terence. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, Thomas says he's seen this on wine bottles. What What do you mean by that? Are you talking about um, the the AR experience? Uh, and he says 19 crimes specifically. I'm definitely going to look into that, um, see if that's being used. You mean AR? What is yes. It? Uh, Thomas, can you elaborate? It sounds really interesting. He says yes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really cool. I'm glad it's starting to, to pop up and be used. So Lydia is creating the keyframes for her animation illustrator. She, uh, we're working on the background right now, correct? Yes. So she's... We're um, going to animate our background to make the... Uh, well, okay, I'm going to quickly show what we actually want to make. Mm -hmm. So this is what the final product's gonna be looking like through the AR app. Yeah. And that's done through the Photoshop um, timeline feature. For those of you who didn't, don't know, uh, Photoshop does have an animation feature hidden in its depths. Um, yeah. it's, I, I love using it to make animated GIFs, um, and it, it's great for the AR experience to create a repeating animation. And if you're just starting out with animation and you're not familiar with uh, After Effects, you can start with creating 
animations frame by frame in mm -hmm. Photoshop, and Photoshop makes it extremely easy and intuitive to figure it out. And if you have a strong uh, drawing uh, background, so you, you, you are an artist who draws or paints, that could be the starting, starting um, the beginning of your like, uh, animation experience, the f making frame animations in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And then move on and explore maybe that in After Effects. Yeah. Or wow. other tools. For those of you out there that are that are watching, what what's your experience with um, like what software they use? What's yeah? What to software make animations? Are you using if you're doing animation, if not, are you a beginner or what? What apps are you using? Miriam says this is magic. It's perfect. I'm too excited. I need to contain myself. Me too. I'm this, it, I I I want to to make a postcard now and, and start animating. It's a or lot of fun. Like a, you can make a bag with pattern surface design and then animate that. Mm -hmm. Try to animate a piece. On yeah. The bag. Uh, Boris, the name of the bird is Sweet Valentine. Our handsome man. And Boris also says that he uses Movie Maker to Ooh. to work on things. So that's a good one. Thomas says he just use, uses After Effects right now. And so does Amanda. But uh, she's tried using Photoshop to animate today, and you're, you're confused about it? Um, we will help you work through that process. Lydia will um, talk about it step by step. It's, it's a lot easier than you would think. You utilize the, um, the layers in Photoshop to uh, animate and re reveal each keyframe as it goes down the timeline. JC says uh, they're animating on Photoshop while watching this. Great to hear. If any of you want to follow along, please do. Or uh, it would be great to work on the challenge that we have going on, the limited palette challenge. If you go to be.net slash live and look under the challenge tab, you can check out um, the limited palette colors uh, to work with in your illustration. The topic is that we're working with is movement, since our postcard today is going to be animated. Uh, you can draw whatever you'd like, just work in Illustrator or Photoshop, and make something cool for us. We're going to be looking at those submissions later today. And the cutoff time for this round is going to be at 2.30, so you guys have about an hour uh, to work on those. Just get loose with it, get, have fun, doesn't need to be too serious. Mm -hmm. So Lydia's exporting. No, I'm not. Or I'm saving, just saving my Illustrator, Illustrator file. file. Make always save, guys. If you're working <laughs> in Photoshop right now, save. Yeah. Please save. Always, always good reminder to save regularly, just in case something happens. Yeah. And for those who just joined, um, what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm creating my uh, animation layers as separate artboards in Illustrator. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to export um, each artboard as a PNG file with transparency. And then I'm going to place them into Photoshop mm -hmm. and uh, make a, a frame animation in Photoshop. OK, I think uh, I'm done with the uh, background here. So let's try now. Um, to export all these artboards as PNGs. I'll check use artboards all. Place them in one folder. Choose transparent for my background. Click OK. And now in Photoshop, um, I'm going to make a new document. What size are you working on for the postcard? Yeah, so well, this is important. Um, your post, so uh, my postcard is five inches by seven inches. And when you create your animation, your animation needs to be the size of the postcard or whatever uh, trigger you're going to, like it's, if it's or your poster size, whatever size is your printed piece. So it's five by seven. Go 
And I think here in the United States, at least a uh, five by seven postcard is a standard. Yeah, I think that's the uh, standard size. I, the other one I, is four by six, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, those are, just require one postcard stamp to mm -hmm. mail. Anything bigger, you're gonna need more. Uh, check with uh, your local post office to find out what those requirements are if you want to send out a promotional mailer like this. Um, it's a great, simple uh, thing to send to art directors to show off your work, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll stand out if you're using an AR app to, to make it. So Lydia, you're taking so this all are my, of those key yeah, frames? These are my PNG files that mm -hmm. I just exported from Illustrator, and what I'm going to do is just to drag and drop them into my uh, Photoshop document. And then I'll just place press. them one by one. Yeah. And you need to press enter to yeah. place each image. So is PNG the best export file to send to Photoshop? Well, I'm using PNG and I'll show why. I'm using it because it allows me to have transparency. And with my birds, I want to have just the birds mm -hmm. and not the whatever default background comes with it and JPEG. Well, mm -hmm. JPEG doesn't support transparency. Yeah, JPEG's a totally um, flat raster that uh, isn't transparent at all. Well, PNG supports that transparency. Mm -hmm. So now we have all, all all the pieces for our animation, all the layers. We have the birds and different stages of movement. We have the uh, um, the uh, concentric circles. So now let's uh, try to build some frames. So how do you open the timeline? Uh, tool oh, in yeah. Photoshop if you don't have it open. So you can go to under window, you can go to workplace, a uh, workspace, and choose motion. There's a motion preset, yeah. uh, which is great. I think you can also, if you have a specific uh, workspace that you like to work in, you can yeah, just you open can just... the timeline by going to window and uh, open the t timeline panel separately. Yeah. So it's Here right it at is. the bottom. Mm -hmm. Great. So the timeline is going to be your home base for animating in Photoshop. I don't think they can. They see our timeline on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, can you move us to the other uh, side so they can see that corner of the screen? Well, I can also. Uh, uh, there we go. We can see the okay, timeline. Good. Um, if you bump it up. There you go. Okay, now you guys can see the timeline. The timeline will appear at the bottom of Photoshop when you open it. Okay. So I'm going to make uh, layers visible now. I'll start with the background. So this is my first frame. And I will, so the first frame needs to match your trigger image. Mm -hmm. You'll need to bump the timeline up, time up for them to see it. Melissa asks, will Lydia go between for the bird to create a smoother transition? Uh, um, do you mean tweening? Tweening? No, we're not going to do any tweening. Yeah, but that's something something for you to explore yeah, and experiment an with. An advanced <laughs> animation technique. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, like, I'm uh, turning visibility for my background layer and uh, my the, the, the first bird. Mm -hmm. So that's the first frame. Next, I'm adding another frame, and um, so I'm going to change. Well, I'm going to keep the background the same for now, static. Mm -hmm. Let's say for four frames, but I the don't bird think folks starts moving. Got to see that. Um, what button you choose? If you could move the it's on the bottom here on the, the screen, oh, you can't see it. Yeah, it's right Just here, resolution next to the folks. trash button. Like, so I duplicated the frame, and now I'm going to. Um, to select the bird, the first bird, and uh, turn on the next bird, the the, the next s stage mm -hmm. of flying. Uh, Abraham had a great suggestion uh, in Photoshop. If you click F, you get the hand tool, um, which moves the canvas around. Um, so well, great. yeah, it's not really well. Okay, 
It's a good I, tip to have in Photoshop. Thank you. <laughs> Same background, next bird, and the four. So we have four, four, four birds. Mm -hmm. now we're going to have four frames. Let's uh, check it now. I'll set um, the animation to forever. That means loop, looping it. That's what you would use for if you were creating an animated oh, GIF as well. That's not the right one. And speaking of GIFs, um, Jade in the chat created a GIF for the contest. So. Um, I'm excited to, to look at that in a bit. What are you all working on for the challenge if you're, you're making something? Okay, so that's what we have now. So we've got four frames of animation so far. Yeah. So you can see the, the full movement of our sweet Valentine. I'm going to copy this four frames, get them the same just to kind of have a longer animation. Mm -hmm. So I have eight frames and two cycles, the bro two cycles. And now let's start doing something with the background. So I'm going to select all these frames and duplicate them again. And just now keep the bird the same, mm -hmm. but um, only change what is happening in the background by selecting and deselecting uh, appropriate la la layers uh, with the background. Uh, and to answer your question, Miriam, um, the, the resolution of our desktop is a little squished in the, uh, the video here, just so we can get in the entire canvas of Photoshop. Um, it's, it's a little hard to do it um, because uh, the resolution of the computer is mm -hmm. a little different um, when you're streaming, so we apologize for that, but just to make sure you can see everything that's going on right now. So I added this like a kind of flashing, flashing background in the effect, middle. yeah. Create some more variety um, of animation. So you can experiment um, yourself, mm -hmm. but that's the kind of the principle. Ibrahim says it looks so real, and Sarah says amazing. Okay, now let's add, uh, continue adding uh, more. <laughs> yeah, refine <laughs> the, the, yeah. the background. Make the, the circles pulsate. Uh, Ishan, uh, asks, what size iPad Pro do you use or prefer, Lydia? Which one? You have the big one, right? The yeah, I'm using the, the biggest there is. That's <laughs> the, that's yeah, that's the 12.9. Yes, no, the, la screen. the last one. Yeah, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. I, I also have that size, so um, the it's this size. You can have a size comparison with my face. Um, so this is the largest size. I prefer it. I know some people like the smaller one. It just depends on how much canvas you, you want to draw on. Ryan says he would love the, the iPad Pro. It's definitely worth picking up. Um, it's my favorite tool to use, as well as Lydia's to, to draw in. So Lydia, you're working on the background right now of the bird. Yep. And so she is just, um, for each frame, all, with all the layers in Photoshop on the, the right side, um, she is just hiding um, all the ones that she doesn't want and revealing um, the frames that she is using. Yeah, in the order I, I want them. Exactly. And all, all you need to do them. is click on the keyframe in the animation timeline and then hide or reveal yeah. whichever layer you want to show. So very, very simple and straightforward. Um, if you guys have any questions about um, the animation in Photoshop, please ask in the chat on be.net slash live. Come join us. Um, we will answer your questions about animating. Okay, so we have 20 frames as we originally planned for this action. And so now this is how it looks. Amanda says, uh, that's a lot easier than the way I tried. Well, how do you try it? <laughs> Thomas says he still uses an iPad Air 2 with 
um, a Wacom bamboo sketch. That's also a good, good one to use. Steven says it's so fun to use, it's like magic. And just to repeat, um, so in Illustrator, I created separate artboards and I placed all the parts of my animation um, on separate artboards. Mm -hmm. Like I have all the, uh, the birds here, I have four different movements, and then I have my uh, background that is starts with all the circles in place and then uh, slowly we're starting removing, uh, create, create, creating in, uh, movement from in, inside, outside. So we're removing circle by circle in order. And Val uh, asks, is Lydia using her own iPad and what size is it when uh, you're drawing? And yeah, Lydia has her own iPad and we, uh, both of us prefer the, the largest iPad size, which is 12.9. Mm -hmm. And then for the flashing effect, I have just this solid uh, fill backgrounds, um, just red and gray. Yeah. And then, so what I did, I exported this artboards as PNG files, placed them all in one folder, and I chose PNGs because I want to have to keep preserve transparency uh, to my um, artboards that has the birds. Like I don't want uh, them to be placed on a default background mm -hmm. that is white. So that's what I did. And then in Photoshop, we created a, a new document that has the same size as my printed postcard, and that is five inches by seven inches. And we used the um, uh, motion motion workspace to, to, to have access to the timeline uh, panel. So then what I did, I, uh, I just uh, opened the finder, went to my folder with all the uh, exported PNGs and I just dragged and dropped them into my um, Photoshop document and placed them one by one. And I also named them correctly. So that's very important. Name your you don't want to get confused about what kind of layers, like what, you don't want to, to get confused about what is the order. So make sure that when you work in Illustrator, uh, you name all the artboards consequently the right way. And I'm going to show you my structure here. So I have, I have the trigger image. I have bird one, two, three, four. Oh, I have trigger copy. Well, where is that one? <laughs> okay, forget about that one. Um, then I would just call the backgrounds, like background one, two, three, four, five, and whatever. So that when I uh, place them into my Photoshop document, I have everything neatly named, and I know exactly what I'm so what I'm placing in each frame, like which layer, and not get confused about that. Okay, so that's uh, that's how we create a frame animation in Photoshop by just um, creating empty frames and then making layers visible, the layers that we want to be shown in that frame. It could be separate layers, like the background is a separate layer and then bird is a separate layer. So I hope that that is clear. Really, uh, does anyone in the chat have any questions? So for example, for the first frame, I have two layers on mm -hmm. the, the bird number one and then the background number one. Yeah, Eduardo asks, um, what's the limit of uploading the GIF? Uh, if you're doing an animation on the internet, and we're not sure. Um. Uh, I think I had, like, for, for this poster, um, where we have, like, I think seven animations here. Yeah, seven animations. I, think. I had, like, 50, oh, no, maybe not that, 50 to 80 frames. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know how big that file was? Was it? It was huge. Okay. It was some of the so, couple hundred megabytes. So there's there's not too much of a limit it, it, for Orasma. Um, now, if you're uploading that something like Behance, there there could be a limit. Um, I'm not sure what that limit is. Well, for you know? Orasma, uh, the movie shouldn't be bigger than one, uh, I think one megabyte. Mm -hmm. Or oh, 10 megabytes? Well, we'll check. There's that. something, yeah. Um, Marie asks, uh, what is, uh, with the challenge, is black and white okay? Um, so we have a challenge going on right now. It's a limited color challenge, and the theme is movement. So if you all go to be.net slash live, check out the challenge tab, you can you can join for that. Um, we have a, almost 45 minutes left to that challenge. Mm -hmm. um, there are, uh, the one of the requirements is uh, using those three spot colors. Um, and so you can use black, can, can you use black and white for it? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, black and white for what? For, for the challenge. Um, oh, I, Val will answer your question on that. But please incorporate those three colors um, into okay. that challenge. Now I'm going to show how to export this file. You go to Elizabeth file. Had, Elizabeth had that question. Yeah, export, and then you choose render video. Mm -hmm. And here, um, let's name it bird animation. Janessa asks, uh, do the frames stay on the screen longer when you up the seconds on each frame? And yes, they do. Um, so you can alter the uh, seconds on each frame yeah, right, can, under the, mm -hmm. right under the right uh, each, under each keyframe you on can, the timeline. Yes, choose the right delay you want mm -hmm. to just um, experiment, play around with it. Yeah, Hector says, wow, that looks amazing, Lydia. And Ryan says, yowza. Okay, so what is important here is to keep the document size. So we don't want it to be some kind of a default uh, movie uh, file size. Mm -hmm. So we want it to be the size of the postcard, so document size. Welcome, Ro Robzilla is in the house, guys. Oh, hi, Rob. Lydia <laughs> knows Rob. Yes, I know Rob. <laughs> I want to run away now. <laughs> <laughs> Rob's watching him. Rob says, loving the voodoo that you do. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining, Rob. OK. Let's go check out that video. So Lydia is opening up the file after she's exported, and it exports as an MP4. I'm going to choose loop. So I'm using QuickTime Player to preview my uh, animation, and uh, under View, There's I select loop. loop to see it play continuously. Oh, well, that one is really fast. Wait, that's not. I, I so may we have might a whole bunch of videos here. <laughs> Let's open a different one. Um, so by altering the... I think the first one had zero delay, like a zero second delay, and this one, I'm hoping, is a little slower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can alter smaller. that in the timeline in Photoshop. Okay, so Sarah this is going... Sarah asks uh, if you illustrated the bird or you downloaded it. So during the first two days, Lydia Drew. We can go S back to our Mr. deck. Sweet Valentine. <laughs> We're going to show. So this is the uh, overview of all the all the steps we took to get to this point. So on, I um, I didn't download the bird. We drew it, and we used iPad for that, and two mobile apps, uh, Adobe mobile apps. One is called Sketch. It's a raster drawing uh, tool. It allows you to sketch out things like similar what you would do on a piece of paper with a pencil, and that's what we did here. Um, and then the next next step was to uh, bring that sketch into draw and then create a vector outline of the bird. So I basically like, drew over my pencil sketch on an iPad in Illustrator Draw. And then um, I sent my file, which had all the layers in it, to Illustrator. And I added, edited a uh, background, a colorful background. 
in Illustrator and created all this um, artboards for my animation, which we did in Photoshop. So we used like four different apps. Um, a great to, workflow to make an AR, and th that's just one of the ways yeah. to uh, achieve this the the AR experience. Mm -hmm. Something that I'm doing, but if you um, can suggest something else, just share it with us. Yeah, what apps are you guys using to animate or draw in? So now that we've created uh, the animation and exported it from Photoshop, we're going to be importing it into Erasma. Yeah. So this is the most important tool. <laughs> <laughs> so to Erasma Studio is the tool. Um, it's it's on uh, online, and that's what you're going to be using to animate and creating the yeah. AR experience. Uh, what's the? How do you spell that? Aurasma. A U R A S M A dot com. So you need to create an account uh, to get access to their AR design tools. And I've done that already. I'm going to quickly log in. <clears throat> Ivan asked, what is Aurasma? Well, uh, Orasma Studio is the, uh, uh, it's a platform um, that allows you to create AR experience. So what you do, you upload uh, your um, image that serves as a trigger, and then you upload your animation that will be um, shown through a uh, AR app. So. Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, this is my account. This is how it looks for everyone. And there is a tab called Assets. And this is where I put all the a assets that I'm going to be using. Go and delete that one. So I upload my static image, which is my postcard, basically, here. just a JPEG or PNG. And I know it loads pretty fast. Normally, mm. normally it does. And then, so there is this two tabs here in the uh, uh, upper uh, left corner. One is called triggers. That's where we upload our static image and that's what is printed as a poster or a postcard. And then next to it, there, there, there are overlays. And that's where I'm going to upload my animations, my, my movie file. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create new overlay. I'll call, call it animation or bird animation. And Val uh, found out uh, for the challenge, um, try to avoid using black and white. We weren't sure uh, at the beginning, but use those three colors um, given under the challenge tab. Don't use black and white. Stick to that limited palette. I'm going to check the loop overlay uh, box so that the animation plays continuously in the app when we view it on the phone. Rob asks if uh, Orasma can be triggered by a traditional painting. I think as long as you've created an animation with that painting, it'll work. Um, yeah. So you can use pretty much, yeah, you can use anything as a trigger. Yeah, we, were, we were talking about what, what the options could be for mm -hmm. the animation, and Lydia uh, was saying that she would like to try this out with a mural. So you, yeah. could, you could do that. Um, as long as it's a JPEG yes. of that piece. Exactly. So now I'm going to create um, an AR experience. They call it auras, so we're going to create a new aura. Oops. So we're going to bring the static image mm -hmm. and the video 
together. And just a reminder before she does that, um, in nine minutes we have a giveaway going on. Uh, you can win these super cool pins. Kind of hard to see from back here, but um, ah, there we go. They are Photoshop and Illustrator app. Uh, mnemonics. Mnemonics. So you can win both of these. You don't even have to choose. So um, come join the chat on be.net slash live. Um, and in nine minutes, we're going to be doing this giveaway. Come, say something in the chat. What apps are you using to make? Do you animate? Are you going to be trying this out after we've used uh, the, the app to create this animated postcard? Just come in, say hi, and you can win a couple of very cool pins. Where would you put these pins if you won them? Where would you put these pins, Lydia? I'd put them on my bag. Mm -hmm. I like showing off My pins. blazer. I have a serious pin collection at home. Good. I have a serious stamp collection at home. Stamps? Yeah. Stamps, pins. <laughs> what do you guys collect? Come join the chat on be.net slash live. We got eight minutes left on that giveaway. Okay, so we're in Orasma Studio, and that's the platform that allows you to create AR experiences. So what we've just done a moment ago, we uploaded our uh, static image that is JPEG, that's the image, the, the, our postcard image, which will serve as a trigger. We also uploaded our animation file there too. So, and now we're going to combine them, to bring them all together. Okay, so here's my bird trigger. And I'm going to place my video overlay over it, which is already here in my account. I want it to fit the size of the, 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 the trigger, so I'm going to resize it and fit to trigger. When I hit preview, I can actually now preview the, uh, have a preview of how the animation is working on my phone from the screen, mm -hmm. which is working. I can see it. Well, I hope can you, you play in the, your phone to okay, let's start off do it. Time. Let's do it. So we're going to show you guys what the animation looks like. If you'd like to try this out for yourself, you can download the HP Reveal app that works with Orasma Studio. So Lydia's on her phone now, and she's testing out that animation. So the, the in app, the preview mode. In the preview mode. So the app's caught um, the the image and is showing off that animation. Yeah. So you need to download that app, which is free, and it used to be called Orasma app, but now it's called HP, HP Reveal. Reveal. Okay, so the preview says to me that it's working. Great. I guess Looks now good. now I can just go and publish it, like save it and, and publish it and make it uh, available for everyone uh, to look at. So I'm going to hit next and here, uh, let's see, let's call it like the bird. Well, no, let's call it, what is it, Sweet Valentine? Sweet Valentine is our good bird boy's name. Sweet Valentine. We can also use hashtags to make it easier for people to find the animation. Mm -hmm. And call it, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Adobe, Adobe Live AR. So can people find other folks' animations? Yes, so, so to be able to view this, uh, first of all, you need to have my postcard. I mean, so you need to have this physical trigger. Secondly, you need to download HP Reveal app. Third, you, in, inside the app, you need to uh, know the name of my account and follow me as follow my account. And only after you start following me and have my postcard, you can um, see how it's being animated. Because if you don't follow my account, you won't be able to experience AR with my postcard. 
Jim asks, uh, are you implementing this in your album cover project? That's a good idea. I think I should do it. Like one, 100 fake AR album that covers. That would be amazing. You should show those to the, the viewers. Um, okay, let's, let's finish that. So I'm going to mm -hmm. save. So I'm saving my aura and now it's available under my, um, uh, in my account and people who have access to it and follow me and have my postcard. Mm -hmm. Can now um, experience uh, AR. Very so that's cool. basically, that's basically it. <laughs> the whole process. And I can go back to my, my deck, my overview for all the steps. So this is what we did during the three days. This is one of the ways of creating augmented reality experience. Uh, you can use mobile, well, I'm using mobile apps, uh, Photoshop Sketch for sketching out. And then I'm using uh, Illustrator Draw to vectorize my sketches and to create uh, the, uh, the um, different stages of my animation. And in Illustrator, I, I, I designed, I laid out my uh, physical trigger, and that is, in this case, it's a postcard. You can do a, a book cover, or you can do a poster, or a flyer, or t-shirt image. Anything. Mural. But then, just to make it easier for myself, I um, uh, also, created separate artboards for each piece of animation. Mm -hmm. And then I exported those artboards as PNG files with transparency. And then I just uh, selected them in my finder uh, and uh, uh, placed them into Photoshop mm -hmm. on separate layers as separate layers and uh, created uh, empty frames and uh, just uh, selected uh, the layers that need to be visible in each frame, like uh, a, a certain background and uh, a certain movement of the bird. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna need to take a pause real quick. So we have less than two minutes, also almost one minute left on the giveaway. So we are giving away two shiny pins. AI and Illustrator. Um, one minute left, giveaway hype. Come to be.net slash live and jump in the chat, say hi. What are your favorite apps? Do you like animation? Do you do animation? Do you collect pens? Do you want these pens? I want these pens. I wish I could get these pens. I'm jealous. One minute left, less than a minute left. Come in and talk. Say hey. Watch Sweet Valentine fly. And who didn't, if you didn't see the postcard? Yeah, we can animate it. Let's that. do it again. Let's demo how the postcard Pen, works. Hype, bird, hype. All the hype. Who is going to win these two shiny Illustrator Photoshop pins? Where are you going to put them if you win them? It's moving. 2 p.m. We're going to use our Adobe magic to figure out who won these guys. So for those of you who posted in the chat on Behance, we are figuring out who's going to win these. <laughs> Looking at your lovely okay. face. Um, okay, so could the, you animate your face? Here's the postcard. Wait. We're looking at the postcard. Yeah, through I, the I can app. hold it. You can hold it. You make it easier for me. Look at the postcard through the app called HP Reveal App, and we're going to animate the bird. Make the bird fly. It's flapping. Sweet Valentine's flying away. And then you can even look at an angle, which is cool, I think. Okay, 
so movement stops it. People are going crazy for this, Lydia. We're glad you like it. And the giveaway has finished. Um, so we're just figuring out who won right now. We'll let you know in a second who won these those pins. Good, so this I'm is just a- you love this technique. A small little project to show you how you can achieve something like that yourself using mm -hmm. uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, and uh, Orasmus Studio mm -hmm. online, and then the HP Reveal app. That's fantastic. So we'll we'll run through um, the process again uh, for those of you who are interested. But I think we found our winner for the pin giveaway. Uh, Creative Type TV, uh, or David Pack, you are the winner of these two shiny pins. Congratulations. Where are you gonna put them? I wish I could have them. So. Um, we will ha be having another giveaway in the last uh, stream. Uh, Kathleen and Mark will be on. Um, so congratulations. Awesome. So I think we should look at a few of the entries. Let's do what that. Do okay, our first entry from uh, how do you think that's pronounced? Alexander Galeta. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is beautiful. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Ballerina. Looks like uh, a lot of textures were used. Maybe some of Kyle's brushes. This was done in Illustrator, so. Uh, great it's, use of textures. I like the roughness of it because mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's very appropriate when you show movement, dancing. Mm -hmm. It um, creates this kind of energy. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. It gives energy to it. Yeah, I think she's uh, she on the beach. And she she might be touching the sun. Great use of movement. Great use of today's theme. Um, so for those of you who would like to join this challenge, if you go to be.net slash live, check out the challenge tab. Uh, we're using a limited palette of three colors to create an illustration that involves movement. Uh, that's today's theme. Can be anything you want for the, the content of the image. Just incorporate movement in some way or idea and check out those three colors. Uh, we've uh, included the, the hex codes so you guys can get the exact um, colors and use Photoshop or Illustrator to create these images. So our next entry comes from Florian. Great use of movement. I like the simple shapes to create that running motion. Mm -hmm. I would probably add something to the background. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like maybe a, maybe a pattern. Some kind of a like movement. Mm -hmm. I like in this one. I the vibrating colors, that almost creates movement in itself. It's pretty cool. And this from Joe, my guess is this is Photoshop. I like the m movement, it reminds me, I feel like I've seen a cheetah animation, a traditional cheetah animation like this before, but it re reminds me of the classic horse running mm, um, yeah. photography. I like the this idea that it's mechanical. Um, really Why is it cold? No, no name. No, no name. What would you guys name this cheetah? I don't know why we want to keep naming animals, but he should be named something. Really beautiful. Rocket to the moon. Great use of the palette. He's going places. Look at his little face. I think this was probably done in Illustrator, I'm guessing. Um, really beautiful. It looks like a children's book illustration. I would love to see this uh, a continuous Where story. The Little Prince. Yes. <clears throat> Is he going to space? Could be the cover for that. <laughs> Meeting friends. 
We still have a bunch to go through, so uh, let me open up some of the others. This is from Josephine. I like the cat tattoo. <laughs> Everybody likes cats. Yeah, that's a great idea, like a little moving tattoo. It's beautiful. This would make a great poster. Uh, for, the, for the vegan mm -hmm. movement. Yeah, that it has a strong kind of message. Yes, yes. And visual Femme, too. vegan, cat power. Really beautiful. So this is from Monica. Where's that bike going? It's very graphical, minimalistic, which is, which is nice. Um, it's escaped his owner. It could be used like a cover for something because it has space mm -hmm. to add a title. Like a book on uh, biking mm -hmm. or history of bikes. Yeah. Let's go back to Lydia's animation and we will uh, check that out some more. We'll look at uh, the other entries in a bit. Okay, so we created the frame-by-frame -frame animation uh, that we uh, used in Orasma Studio as an overlay over our static image trigger, and then published our aura and viewed it through the uh, HP Reveal app on my phone. Are there any questions about how the Erasmus Studio work exactly? Was it clear? So you need to create an account, and then um, when you do that, you get access to the online tools of creating AR experiences. So basically, what you do, you just upload your um, static image, which gets printed on a postcard or poster, as a JPEG or PNG, and then you also upload uh, your video or animation here, mm -hmm. which you will then overlay on top of the uh, J JPEG when you create uh, an aura. So you bring bo both, both of those uh, files together. Kendall asks um, if the trigger image can be on a digital screen. And for those of you just joining, we did test this out. Uh, if you want to test out. Um, well, the triggers, again. so uh, this is what this platform is for. You upload mm -hmm. all the parts of your AR, AR that creates your AR here mm -hmm. in, on, in, into your account online. So you need to have your static image and then your moving image. And then you bring them together, you save it, you publish it, and that's how you, and then the app uh, knows what to like. Knows what to use when mm -hmm. you view when you use it to look at the mm -hmm. printed. Uh, do you want to test that again? I mean, did we answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Kendall said yes. Uh, do you guys have any more questions uh, about? Well, I was actually going to show how to uh, place an animation over the JPEG. Yeah. Let's do it. Again. And then I fit the trigger, and then I'll just, uh, I can preview right there in Erasmus Studio on my screen, see if it works, and it did. And then I can just uh, now publish it, and then let people know what my account name is, so that when they download the HP Reveal app, they could find me and start following my channel. And if they also are lucky to get my postcard, then they can see the animation through the app. So that's how it works. You upload all your assets into this Erasmus Studio online. Uh, you publish your Aura. You download the HP Reveal app. And you do need to have a actual printed piece.
Okay, very cool. So let's, oh, should we demo it again? Yeah. For those so. who missed that part. Hey, David, welcome. I am the mistress of bird. So we're gonna make this guy move. So here's the HP Reveal app, it's free. You can download it for your phone, iPhone or for your Android. And now we're just... Uh, looking at my postcard and see the animation. It can be tilted, but it'll still work. really innovative uh, use of using a postcard as potentially a promotional tool for a art director or company that you want to work with. So much love for Sweet Valentine. So again, this is the HP Reveal app utilizing Erasmus Studio to create an AR experience. Tetsuya asks, can the app work without having to follow the artist? It will only work on your, um, if it's your piece and mm -hmm. you created it and uh, you have everything in your account, can you can see the, the AR, but people who don't follow you won't be able to see it, even mm -hmm. if they have your postcard. So you have to follow uh, a channel. Can um, you opt to publish the project as public or private? It can be. You can keep it private mm -hmm. and share just with a bunch of people to kind of test it out, or you can make it public. Great. It's up to you. Yeah, this is great. How would you all use this? What kind of projects would you like to work on with this technology. Miriam asks uh, if it would only work on the Erasma website digitally. Could you have it on Behance, for example, and ask folks to try it out? Could you put, would it still work in a digital environment to trigger the animation? Well, that's a good question. I haven't tried that. You should test it out sometime. It may. Um, well, let's see. Let's test it right now from my screen. Yeah. I have uh, the file, the Illustrator file, which I used to print my postcard. Oh, look. Oh, it does it work. It does work. You, could even you don't do it even have app. to <laughs> You don't even have to have a printed postcard. That's we what learned we're something. learning today. <laughs> So you could <laughs> upload your image to Behance and ask, well, that's have a prompt cool. for users to put your phone over the image. That's really cool. Thanks for the suggestion, Miriam. That's, we would have never but thought I wonder, of doing I think that. the question is the people who, f so I can see it from my phone because I mm -hmm. created it and it's all in my account yeah. uh, in Erasmus Studio, but people who don't follow me, they probably won't be able to um, have that experience from the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are, there's a lot of tests that we need to run still. Definitely. Very experimental. But thanks, guys. We're discovering something new thanks yeah. to your questions. And we do have 14 minutes left to get your entries in for today's challenge. So the challenge for today is movement using a limited palette. You go to be.net slash live, you can check out the challenge if you want to join in and make something really quick. Uh, maybe utilize a lot of movement to create your, your imagery. Um, so let's take a look at some of the other entries. What do you think? Yeah, are we going to do portfolio with these two? Yeah, um, we, we might have some extra time in today's session to uh, do a portfolio review. 
Um, so if any of you would like Lydia and I to ch take a look at your Behance portfolio, just make a comment in uh, the chat and we'll, we'll take a look at, uh, depending on the time we have left, uh, maybe one or two of those, um, if you guys would like feedback on your, your work. So this uh, submission is from Anita, a lovely dancer. Is she a salsa dancer? Oh, interesting. What does she do? I love it. I love the it, use of negative space. I like irregularities, and I like also like this fluid quality to it mm -hmm. because it uh, this goes well with the whole concept of dancing. It's kind of moody and ethereal mm -hmm. and not staticky, which which is nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those of you who are posting your portfolios in the chat, we'll have um, a member of our team look at them really quickly and we'll select one later. Yeah, I really love this. <laughs> oh, this guy doesn't want to move. Well, he doesn't want to exercise, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. I feel that That's way. how sometimes I feel. This is from Creative Type TV. I love it. What's this guy's name? He doesn't work out. He's got a he's got a good dad bod. This is beautiful. Oh, I love this one. Yeah. Very well um, well executed. I forget what the name of these. Gra graphically. And Do you know what the name of them? physics balls are that are found on every business person's desk yeah I'm not across sure. the country I'm not a business person so <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah really great I love the use of um, half tones I feel it has like a nice guy in the style middle. too yeah like a, a newsprint cartoon mm -hmm. oh this is cool Reminds me of those, um, the traditional wooden art dolls that you, you move uh, to draw from oh, for yeah. poses. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like a different futuristic. A semi human character. Semi human. Jumping around or floating in space. Somebody incorporated Sweet Valentine into their work. He's flying. Well, so somebody is faster than me, that's for sure. <laughs> He's going for a Sweet Valentine. Where is this lady? Moving through those mountains. I like the silhouette against the simplified background. Yeah, and in an animation, we could see how the background, and the landscape moves by in the circle and the clouds. Yeah. And the bird flapping its wings. Mm -hmm. Kathleen says, he's come to steal your girl. Maybe that's the girl for my sweet Valentine. That's so this true. Is she the, might be coming to him. She this might is be the, an assertive woman. Yeah, this is sweet Valentina. <laughs> sweet and Valentina. And we have sweet Valentine. That's so cute. We, we've created a nice story for these lovebirds. Wow. Well, this one has already animation. Yeah. Right? Shooting, Jade. shooting stars. Nice. This is beautiful. Did you use... Photoshop to create this animation. Great use of movement, quite literally. So was it done in Photoshop? Uh, I'm not sure. Jade, if you want to pop in the chat and say how you made this, that'd be great. We love it. Reminds me, I, I wish there was some kind of constellation in the sky that, that looked like this. Wow. This is from Steven. Oh, this is beautiful. It is. Mm. It's very moody. Look at the flames in the background. Mm -hmm. and It's kind of dramatic in a way. Yeah. Elephant protectors. I like the realistic quality mm -hmm. to it. Was it done using Kyle Webster brushes? Good question. What app did you use to make this, Steven? And Jade came back and says she used Photoshop. 
animate that part. I guess free, free animations. Some really lovely work, guys. You're doing great, everyone. You have nine minutes left to submit your entries for today's limited palette movement theme challenge. So get those in so we can review them. Great use of movement from Frau. Again, the negative shapes within the these characters. Really fantastic. Have you guys been inspired by uh, the earlier artists, Logan and, um, yeah, really beautiful. Another I'll moving image, <laughs> sweet kitties. Lydia has two sweet kitties at home. What are their names? I better not say, they're very complex, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they wish to be unnamed. Wonderful. Yeah, very nice movement. Mm -hmm. Smooth and I like this type of animation. Very, very well done. Yeah. Oh. Shows the nature of cats too. Mm -hmm. so All the sleepy and relaxed. Yeah, Tetsuya, wonderful. Daniel, Beethoven. Beethoven. Daniel's got a bunch of entries. I could see this uh, being a poster for um, the concert. A concert mm -hmm. coming up, yeah. Again, great use of negative shapes. Great text. A really prolific fellow. You've got a lot of. This is like a lot of the frames in animation. Yeah. Animated. Oh, yeah. Those are the other entries. One. Yeah. It's from yesterday. It's really nice. Too. Great work. So you have six minutes left to get your entries in. Uh, somebody earlier, Lydia, mentioned your uh, record project. Oh, yeah. We talked briefly about it yesterday, yeah. about my side, one of the side projects that I have. It's called uh, 100 Fake Album Covers, mm -hmm. and it's, um, I have a separate Instagram account for that yeah. to kind of um, do something else mm -hmm. besides work. <laughs> and to me, it's an opportunity to explore um, other illustration styles and also uh, photography. And somebody made a good point about uh, trying to incorporate AR in that. I think I should try that. That would be really cool. Yeah. Can we take a look at some of those album books? Um We have a little bit of time. We could. <laughs> Get the See. inspiration. Okay, we can going. take from my phone. I like how you can use different Instagram accounts in one place, so I can easily switch between them. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who would like to follow Lydia on Instagram, Lydia, what is your uh, username? It's just my first name and last name. It's pretty easy. So be sure to follow her on Instagram and Behance to check out more of her work. You can also just uh, go to the Behance page, I think. Okay, here. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so here's my um, Instagram account dedicated mm -hmm. just to the side project that I'm working on, and that is 100 fake album covers. So that's all one word, uh, 100 the yes, numbers? Yes, one, one word. And then fake album covers, all one word, if you guys would like to follow her project. I think I have like 11 covers right now, but I have no deadlines, so I just do it uh, organically whenever I feel like it or whenever I feel inspired. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I always come up with a name for each cover, like a fake name of the album or a fake band name. And all the photography or illustration that I use is my own. Uh, there is no stock. So it's all originally created. And you're using by me. a lot of different techniques to create these covers. 100 Day Projects are a great way to experiment and create a body of work. I see a lot of artists uh, taking this challenge on for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you can just pick a theme and go at it. For example, here I wanted to explore more uh, gradients in Illustrator. I thought it was interesting and I never really uh, designed anything uh, using gradients. Mm -hmm. and so just one, one project allows you to learn a tool. And then when I was traveling to Argentina, I went to this one of the biggest uh, and oldest cemeteries. It's called Recoleta and I saw a lot of these mausoleums. And for the first time, I noticed that uh, some of the uh, uh, glass windows are actually facing inside the mausoleums, and outside you see like the the the, uh, the back of the icon, which I thought was very interesting and conceptually could be used for something. So that's what it is. It's the the back of the icon um, of the glass window in one of the ma mausoleum, mausoleums. two minutes left to submit your entries to today's challenge. And then I also find it interesting to kind of try to experiment with iPhone uh, and iPhone, and taking pictures with iPhone. Um, and this was done using my iPhone 6 or something mm. like that. Ibrahim asks how the iPhone 10 is. Do you enjoy it? I like the size, it's bigger. Uh, I like the colors and uh, all the memory that comes with it. Um, and also I like different uh, shooting modes, uh, the different portrait uh, modes. You can use like studio light or contour light. So here I, um, was into the blend tool in Illustrator and just thought, what if I create something, an animal with just uh, two lines and then blend them and then copy that piece all over and shape the face of a lion. Using a little bit of capture CC for some parts and then draw, draw over them. This was done with also blend tools, um, a blend, yeah, blend tool in Illustrator, mm -hmm. and then added all the colors and textures in Photoshop. Really gorgeous. This actually is a, a real origami paper butterfly that I photographed oh, and wow. then colored and added all those additional uh, material, um, additional effects to it, like the blurry title. Mm -hmm. um, experimenting, experimenting in Sketch with digital painting, uh, more photography with the new phone, yeah. iPhone 10. Okay, so that's my side project. Really great. Which I wanted to share with you and- Follow me on Instagram. If you have any side projects or so, let us know what you're doing in your spare time, if you have it. And the challenge is now closed for today. Um, just for Lydia and our session, uh, we still have one more uh, round with Kathleen and Mark. They'll be coming up next. So we're gonna review the entries for today, just in a bit. Um, so let me, give me one moment and we'll look at those. And take a look at Lydia's final uh, image for mm -hmm. The frame animation that frame we did animation. today. Okay, so we'll, we're going to take a look at the last round of entries for today's challenge. Uh, this is by Lindsay. Balloon cycle, unicycle, balloon cycle. Interesting texture. Mm -hmm. 
it's really it looks cool. like it was painted with markers over some kind of a textured, yeah. like paper stock mm -hmm. with rough like paper texture. Yeah. Oh no. Looks like that link doesn't work. Oh, paper cut? Oh yeah, this is from Lauren. Nice. Using like Illustrator that. and Photoshop. It has a handmade feel. Mm. Really gorgeous. Yeah, this would make a great poster or card. I like the wave patterns. Beautiful sunset. It's one of those birds. Sweet Valentine? Is he flying away to find his lady? This is oh, this nice. Great use of movement. Did you animate this in Photoshop? I like the splatter texture. A lot of a lot of great textures going going on with you guys. Everyone's doing fantastic work. Very impressed with all of these entries. And there are a lot of entries also today. Yeah. <laughs> the Did everyone week. like this challenge today? There's a lot more entries than than Monday. Cockatiel person, this is adorable. It's cool. I have a pet cockatiel, not here in California, but my mom has them. Um, mm -hmm. Cockatiels are great. You have all kinds of companions. animals. You also have I do. What, a, a lizard. I have a bearded or dragon. Or a chameleon. A bearded what? dragon oh. named Katsu. He has his own Instagram too. He's a he has his popular own Instagram dude. account. Yeah. <laughs> and your son. parrots? Yes. I grew up with parrots, so very familiar with cockatiels. They're, they're fun pets to own. Do any of you have pets? Feel free to share in the chat. I would love to hear what kind of pets you own or have owned. Well, that's a sin. Skateboarding owned. cockatiel. Why is it that I'm zooming out, but this is getting larger? That's counterintuitive. Somebody says that it was uh, my favorite challenge of the week. That's great. I really liked it. I think a limited palette and a general theme gives a lot of opportunity for experimentation. Great work. This is from Lindsay. Got a windy day. Is this you, Lindsay? A mystery lady. Mystery lady. I like the glasses. I think she's in the desert or under the water. Mm -hmm. Could be both. Water desert. I like the plants around here too. From Saeed. I like this one a lot. Yeah. Um, Very conceptual. Kind of intense in nature, mm -hmm. strong, like unusual subject matter, but yeah. at the same time, kind of relevant. Mm -hmm. um, more on the dark side, the style of the illustration, which is nice. Um, to have different, various um, moods. Yeah. Controlling two ballerinas. Are they puppets or are they people? A lot of intrigue there. Yeah, and that's what is nice about that piece. It kind of makes you um, think like yeah. what is really happening there, and you can start creating a story of your own when you look at things like that. Mm -hmm. Like what could be also like additional elements in that middle space over there? Like what is actually happening between those two mm -hmm. uh, characters and yeah. beneath him? Like but, what but games he's trying to, what mind games is he trying yeah. to play with them, and how he's going to man manipulate them into mm -hmm. what? Yeah. Are any of you uh, conceptual illustrators? Do you do editorial pieces? This reminds me of that from Anaga. Wow. I like how airy, like you can see like atmos uh, a atmosphere here mm -hmm. and the uh, atmospheric perspective. Yeah, great design. It almost reminds me for some reason of a uh, California fog somewhere on the coast of yeah. the ocean. This morning it was With really With all the algae blooming. Yeah. Or the, the layers of the earth that I get, they're descending into the those fiery depths. It's simple, but at the same time, it is complex. Yeah. And the complexity is achieved through layers and overlays and transparency. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, how you know in the foreground it's more complex and there's more detail and but then it becomes less and less and less and the, the bushes dissolve and turned into this kind of smooth uh, rolling hills mm -hmm. nice very gorgeous this is from Rita cool I love the character is that the moon or the, I think it's the moon behind her. She in late night skateboarding through the forest. Great use of movement. A lot of characters in these illustrations. Mm -hmm. You guys, does everyone like designing characters? Uh, a lot of different, different characters in these. Oh, a band. Monster band. <laughs> wow. Oh, very Pretty cute from cool. Kevin. <laughs> very nice. Using After Effects, um, too. A lot of complexity. The only thing is the color palette wasn't quite stuck to. Is there music to it? To. I'm not, let's, I can't do music right now, but if there is, very cool, Kevin. Really great. Okay, so we will decide on the winner of the challenge in a bit. So uh, Lydia, would you like to go over the project that you worked on over the past three days? While I compile the- The portfolio The reviews? final, okay. final round. So just to summarize what we did, the three days we had here, yes, we made a, a postcard. We started on an iPad in Photoshop Sketch to make the, uh, uh, to, to draw the birds, and then I vectorized them again on the iPad in uh, Illustrator Draw, created the outlines, and I did a little bit of color, and then uh, I sent my layered uh, draw file into Illustrator, which is pretty easy, and it just you can comes right into Illustrator with all of your layers preserved, which makes it easy to work, like fine tune uh, the illustrations and clean them up a little bit and add extra uh, visual elements. Like in this case, I created a uh, geometric uh, background using the um, what is it? The <laughs> polar grid tool? Yes. Uh, makes it very easy to make concentric uh, circles. And then um, I knew already, uh, I had a clear idea in mind how I want my animations to work. So I, I wanted to show how the bird flies and then I wanted to create this pulsating uh, circles moving from inside to uh, outside. And that's why, like, I create I created the separate artboards with all of my um, the parts of my uh, animations on separate artboard, and uh, I exported each artboard as a separate uh, layer into Photoshop. Um, well, I, no, I exported it as a PNG with transparency, and then just placed them as separate layers in Photoshop and created a frame animation in Photoshop out of those layers. So you, and you do that by uh, uh, selecting uh, the lay, like, like making it visible for each frame, like the bird and the background that works for this particular frame. And then um, the last tool that we use and that is probably the most important actually tool to create the AR experience is called um, Orasma Design Studio. So it's like a, a website you go to and you cre create an account there. And uh, that's where you upload your, um, your like trigger image that is JPEG or PNG. And then you also upload your um, video or animation. Uh, that gets overlaid over it. So you publish, you publish your uh, aura. They call it auras, and um, uh, make it available to people who follow you. 
And the last thing you need is to download the free uh, Orasma app, or now it's called HP Reveal app. And then you just look at your trigger, the static image, the postcard um, with this app, with your phone, and the app shows, it, it brings it to life. Lindsay says, thank you so much, Lydia, for introducing us to Erasma. Well, thank you. I spent hours playing with that last night. Oh, great. It's great to hear. Isn't it intuitive? Or did was, was something confusing about it that we need clarification? Yeah, what do you or, like about it? Or did it work smoothly for you? Um, what did you use it for? Mm -hmm. OK, so got the semi-final Do we finalists. have a moment before we do the Behance review? Sure. Yeah, yeah let's, 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 back over let's demo the postcard again. Okay, so we're gonna demo this one more time for you all. And then we're gonna choose the winner of the challenge for today. Okay, so this is the result of our uh, work. Augmented reality postcard. So hopefully it was clear how to make it happen and you can you know, just play with it on your own with all the tools. If you're an iPad user, you can use uh, our mobile apps for that. Or if you're not, you can just uh, start making frame animations directly in Photoshop. Like if you're using using a Cintiq or a Wacom tablet, you can just start drawing um, and create your layers and then create frames out of them and directly in Photoshop. And then you export your frame animation um, as a movie file and uh, yeah use the Orasma Studio app. So we hope that uh, you all will, will try it out. And Lydia will post um, the postcard uh, on Behance, so you guys can check it out later. And we have the semi-finalists for you to select mm -hmm. okay. the winner from. My favorite task. <laughs> it's, it's all it, of them are great. It's really tough to I, choose any, yeah. any, 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 just one person. I agree. There, there was a lot of incredible work done today, so it's almost impossible to choose. I wish we could give every one of you um, a winning submission, but we do have to choose one. Uh, so we have Anita's, mm -hmm. the Lawrence, paper cut, the paper cut. Shades. The bird constellation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Lovely kitties from Tetsuya. <laughs> A dramatic concept illustration mm -hmm. from Saeed. This flipping bird, cockatiel Kai. I don't know who did this. We don't have the name for this one here. And Anagas. Beautiful layered image. I think they should all win. I agree. You're all winners. No, unfortunately, we do need to choose one, Lydia, and I'm gonna give that task to you. The hardest part. Can we uh, look through them again? Yes. Real quick. Lindsay says, I wish it was like Oprah in here. You win, and you win, and you all win. <laughs> Everybody wins. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> I guess I'm going to choose between those guys who added animation to them because it's, like, it's another layer of complexity Absolutely. Uh, to illustration. So I would say the cats. Are they the cats or maybe they're like, they look like cats. They look like Siamese cats. Siamese kids. Yeah, that's what my Tetsuya. kids are. <laughs> You're the winner. Congratulations. Everyone did incredible work. And do not fret, Kathleen and Mark are also going to decide on a winner um, after we head out for today. 
So again, congratulations, Tatsuya. So we have less than 10 minutes left, but I think we have a little bit of time to do a speed round of a portfolio review. So we're gonna take a look at Christopher. We're gonna take a look at your, your Behance page. And I'm sorry we don't have a whole lot of time to do this, but we really wanted to get one in today. Check out somebody's work who's been watching. So Christopher, he is an illustrator and he's had experience in four other fields and he does freelance work. And he's been featured on the Illustrator Draw page three times as well. It's great. Is he using a draw for all of his illustrations? Or yeah, what is his primarily tool? Good, good question. So a lot of different experience. Um, let's take a look at a few of his images. I, this hippo is really calling to me. Christopher, it seems like movement is a huge part of your work. I like the gloss in his. It's cool. Hippo is adorable. He's just he's, uh, he's blobbing came out around. In the water yeah, to greet us. Wonderful. illustration for Colleen Oaks novel, Wendy Darling. So I, it seems like it's a Peter Pan inspired novel. Great movement. So we have a, an image with a lot of depth here. Yeah, I like contrast and shading mm -hmm. um, and the, the uh, detail, so it's kind of realistic. Um, but at the same time, uh, the proportions are kind of exaggerated, which adds to it uh, its quality of a... Uh, Definitely. Uh, like, a, I don't know, fantasy art a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so Christopher does a lot of character design. Like this mechanical nice. wasp. It's like similar to his hippo, he's using the uh, mm -hmm. um, overlays to create this kind of glossy look and reflection, yeah. which is nice, consistent. Mm -hmm. Throughout his work. Yeah. The, the variety of characters you're able to come up with, Christopher, is really inspiring. This is a great example of uh, showing off scale um, in a character design. So we have your uh, average human proportions compared to this mechanical dragon. Nice. Do we have another yeah. portfolio we can look at? We don't have enough time, I think. So. other pieces. So any feedback you would I like the, the colors. Um, I like how warm it feels and mm -hmm. kind of the round shapes and the, just the general roundness to it. Mm -hmm. um, feels dynamic to me. Mm. But it, it stands out against his other work in terms of color palette and just the general style. So I guess mm -hmm. he was trying something new maybe, or maybe it's his original style. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, a lot of experimentation here. Chris, are you wanting to focus on character design or um, you, you have some book imagery as well? Um, so what kind of overall feedback would you give Chris? I don't have a lot of experience with character design, so I'm not really sure mm -hmm. about the criteria. Yeah. So I may not be the, the best uh, like judge here. Where would you um, see this work? What I like about it is that his pieces seem to be consistent and just well, the way he presents his, like the thumbnails, for mm -hmm. example, it's always this isolated uh, character in the uh, in the uh, cover uh, image, yeah. which is nice. So you immediately get the idea of what it's about, like what mm -hmm. it's, you're going to see uh, in that project. Yeah. I think consistency um, in a portfolio is really important. important. It can, I think, make and break it sometimes for art directors. Uh, they, they would want to see that you can uh, have the same style for a particular piece uh, if they were to hire you. So that's great to see. Although experimentation, there, there is a place for that as well. I. 
Um, going back to Lydia's 100 day project, for example, um, using a project like that is a fantastic way to, to start experimenting um, with your work. Mm -hmm. So okay. a mixture of both is good, but make sure that your voice is really clear in your portfolio and your work. Yeah, and you can see, it could certainly see that there is a definite style to it and it's recognizable. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure it will become even more uh, kind of defined with time. I agree. But I would say it's a prolific artist. He has a lot of pieces there. Yeah, really prolific. Keep on, Driven. Keep on making these character designs, Chris. This is, this is great. Lydia, we have a few minutes left. Can we take one last look at your completed postcard? Do you guys okay. like to see it animate one more time? <laughs> one more time, if you're not tired yet of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really beautiful. Um, for those of you who might have just joined, um, Lydia created over three days this beautiful animated AR postcard. And coming up next is Kathleen is coming back with Mark Uzmiani, and this is the last session of the day um, of this week. So please tune in and welcome Mark and Kathleen back to the show. And next week we have more illustration, but the focus is going to be on primarily uh, mobile illustration. So just working on your iPad, uh, working in sketch and draw. And we're going to have Mark Crilly, Kyle Webster, Jack Jackson, and Rocky Rourke in the house. And they're all going to be working on mobile illustrations. So tune in next week. But tune in every week. It's a fantastic show to get inspired by. And come bring your iPad ready to work on mobile illustrations. So we have one last look at Lydia's postcard before we go. Really great work, Lydia. We hope Thanks. that you guys use the AR app. Yeah, hopefully you learned some hopefully tips inspired. and tricks today and uh, you can use um, what we showed in creating your own uh, AR experiences. Absolutely. Um, well, come and up. share it, share it yeah. with the community. Yeah, please post your work on Behance. Um, we would love to see that work. Um, coming up next is Kathleen and Mark Uzmiani. They're going to be doing more live illustration. So come back in a few minutes and keep on making. Thanks, guys. Thank you.